Some More Outdoor, Episode 21. Welcome to Some More Outdoor, where we speak with authors, entrepreneurs, and business owners about how the outdoors has affected their life and their projects. This show is to remind you of the healing properties of the outdoors. So, are you ready to learn what the nature effect can do for your life? Well, here's your host, Brett Trout. Hello, S'more Country. I'm your host and personal outdoor advocate, Brett Trout. It's time to roast up your marshmallow, sit back, relax, and enjoy the treat that I have on today's Campfire Chat. With me today is Kate Erickson. Welcome to Campfire Chat, Kate. Thank you so much, Brett. I'm really excited to be here, and thank you to all of your audience members who are tuning in to listen to this. Well, thank you so much. Kate Erickson is the content creator and community leader over at Entrepreneur on Fire, a a seven-day-a-week podcast that interviews today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. Kate partnered with John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneur on Fire, after leaving her position as an account executive at an advertising and marketing agency in 2013. She is the host of Kate's Take, the Entrepreneur on Fire audio blog, and author of The Fire Path, where passion and our guidance unite. Well, Kate, I've given some more country a little overview about you. Why don't you go ahead and take a moment and dive into more details? Awesome, Brett. Well, thank you for that intro. Um, I am a California girl. I grew up in San Diego. And so I've always considered myself incredibly lucky to live in a geographical area where I have access to a lot of amazing outdoor adventures. We have the mountains close, the desert is close, the beach is close, we can ski very nearby. So I've always considered this to be such an amazing place to live for that reason. I mean, you can really be outdoors year round. So I grew up in San Diego. I spent some time in San Francisco, which I absolutely loved. And then I made the crazy decision to move across the country to the state of Maine, which, um, you know, I I loved very much. That was a very new experience for me, you know, uh, having seasons for the first time in my life really was great because then I was able to experience even more cool outdoor stuff that I wasn't really used to living in San Diego. And um, yeah, that's kind of me. I I grew up very corporate oriented. That's what I knew. That's what I was comfortable with. That's how I thought life was supposed to be. You know, you go to a job and you earn money and you try and climb that ladder. And, you know, I I had a, a very great experience doing that, I guess you could say, only because I didn't know that entrepreneurship existed. So I also consider myself very lucky to have found entrepreneurship. And, you know, now today I'm able to do what I love day in and day out. And that feels really, really great. Well, and I thought the move was just kind of random to San Diego, just because San Diego was so cool. But, you know, from your move, yours and John's move back from, uh, from Maine to San Diego, that's just uh, because you grew up there. Yep, you that know. was me coming back home for sure. Awesome. Yeah, well, I used to live in San Diego as well for three years. I went to school at San Diego State, so I had a blast down there. It was just uh, the lifestyle down there is really crazy, though. You know, yeah, go on. it can be. <laughs> it, can be <laughs> it can be in a big city like that. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us today, Kate, and I appreciate you being here. So I like to always start off the show with some type of nature quote or mantra that you live by, because I think that nature quotes have a huge impact in people's lives. And, you know, a lot of people, if you look on Pinterest, on Facebook, people are always sharing quotes with pictures of nature images on it. So it, I don't know if it's because of our desire to be outdoors or not, but or if it just enhances the quote itself. But anyways, what do you have for a small country today as far as your nature quote or mantra that you live by? Yeah, that's a really great observation, Brett. I guess I've never really thought about that before, but now that you say it, it's so true. I think maybe for me, like whenever I see that in a background, it's always quite calming to me. Um, So maybe that has something to do with it. But Mm -hmm. a quote that I live by, maybe not necessarily directly related to nature, but I feel that it is in some ways for me, is by Albert Schweitzer. And he says, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. If you love what you're doing, you'll be successful. So that's so important in our world today. Because a lot of people are driving to work this morning or maybe a weekend they're listening to this show. 
maybe even on Sunday. And they're just dreading going into their work in the morning, on Monday morning, because they're not happy in the environment that they're in, and which leads to a lack of success in their workplace. So what was that, that final one again? If you're happy, it'll lead um, to it, success. If you love what you're doing, you will be successful. If you love what you're doing, you'll be successful. Mm -hmm. And since you and John love what you're doing, you guys are just the epitome of success right now <laughs> in, in the online world. So, well, thank you for sharing that with us today. I always like to start out, used to in my intro, actually what I like to teach people is to really reconnect with nature and start living with that childlike wonder again. And, and what I mean by that is as adults, we forget that feeling that we used to have when we were, when we were kids and we don't live that way anymore. We don't, we're not in awe of the things that happen around us. When we're little and we used to play outdoors, we were so inspired and happy and just full of life. But today we we're so busy that we don't get out there and experience the outdoors. And if we do, it's usually maybe one week a year because people are so busy and they don't have any vacation time. So I like to dive in the first part of it to help inspire people and remind people about their childhood experiences with a story from you. So if you can tell us a story from your childhood about your experience of the outdoors and really take us to that time and share us uh, share with us that experience. Sure. I remember from a very early age, my parents were, you know, always very encouraging of my sister and I, you know, playing sports, um, being active, being outdoors, getting outside, whether that was for a walk or going to the beach or whatever it might be. And something that my parents loved to do when they were growing up before my sister and I came into the picture was uh, camping. And so my parents kind of introduced my sister and I to camping at a very young age. And I so clearly remember one of our very first camping trips that we went on as a family. You know, I couldn't have been maybe more than five or six years old at the time. And um, again, this is one of my very first memories on a family trip together. We were sitting around the campfire and my dad was opening a can of beans and putting it, you know, in a little uh, pot over the fire and I just remember kind of looking around and thinking, wow, this is really, really cool that I get to do something like this with my family. I felt like everything that happened on that camping trip, it was a brand new experience for me. Like I was learning so many new things every time we did something, whether that was, you know, how we cook our food or, you know, how we treat nature in terms of like disposing of our trash and you know, what we're able to experience through nature on the walks that we would go on or the hikes that we would do or going down to the river. And so I just remember that being a really cool experience because, you know, when you're a child, a lot of experiences are all new to you because, of course, you don't know much at that point. But I just that camping trip sticks out in my mind as something that was kind of my first experience and understanding our relationship to nature and what nature could give back to us through us just going out and experiencing it. Yeah. And do you remember where that camping trip was? It, you know, it was somewhere in Oregon and I couldn't tell you exactly where, but I, I remember it was in Oregon. Oh, and so beautiful up there too, you know, mm. cause it was probably living in San Diego. Would you, were you born in San Diego? I, I was actually born in Oregon, oh, but okay. my okay. parents moved to San Diego when I was about four. So uh, I was very young when I came to San Diego. So this is kind of where I consider home. Okay. So, but living in Oregon and, and that first experience, just being around the trees that are up in Oregon, you know, because mm -hmm. I grew up in Southern California and my first experience going to Oregon and Northern California on the coast with all these giant trees around us was just amazing. So, well, thank you so much for sharing, sharing that childhood experience. And I know that it's reminded of those, of those people that are driving to work this morning about their first experience when they were young, either camping or just spending some time outdoors. So awesome story. So I want you to go in and talk about another outdoor experience, a time when you were just someplace and the feeling that you got was just so overwhelming and the place was so amazing and so beautiful that, uh, that you were just in awe. So take us to that time in your life and tell us that story and, and what that experience felt like for you. Yeah, I remember when I was a junior in high school, we, it, my basketball team went on a camping trip. 
And you can tell I love to camp. This will probably be a theme for me this episode. I really love camping. Um, I think it's such an amazing way to to spend time outdoors. But so we went to Yosemite on a camping trip and I had never been to Yosemite before. That was my first time. And I remember we woke up really, really early one morning. And of course, all of us high school students were, you know, moaning and groaning about having to wake up. I think we got up at like 530 or something. But, um, you know, our our leaders, our counselors or whatever you want to call them, our coaches, um, were really excited about getting us on a trail really early because we were going to hike to Half Dome. And I remember, you know, all of us kind of like dragging ourselves and being like, oh, why do we have to get up so early? And we get on this trail and we start hiking towards Half Dome. And have you been to Yosemite, Brett? Yes, I have. Okay. So if you're familiar with that trail and with that hike, um, you know, I, I can picture it so clearly right now. It's just these amazing waterfalls. We were there the perfect time of year. The waterfalls were like full force. And I remember making that hike and and looking over the ledge and seeing these amazing waterfalls and then seeing Half Dome up ahead of us. And it, it was such, it, you know, I just stopped and was like, wow, I cannot believe that I was mad about having to wake up this morning to come and experience like what is in front of me right now. And, you know, it's incredible that that is that's out there waiting for us anytime we want it. It's just there. We just have to go to it. And, you know, from that moment on, I kind of promised myself that no matter you know, how tired I was or no matter how much I kind of thought in that moment that I didn't want to go do something outside or to like experience something like that. I remembered how I felt in that moment. And, you know, ever since then, I've I've never complained or been sad about having to wake up early or, you know, take that extra, go the extra mile to be able to experience something like that. Oh, and, and you know, I'm picturing in my head, I've never actually hiked to the, did you guys go to the top of height of Half Dome? No, we only went to like the, I, I think it's the one, the furthest you can go without actually basically having to spend the night. Okay. So the waterfalls, a small country that she passed was Nevada Falls and Vernal Falls. And they're absolutely beautiful. They just, so the experience that she had there was just, I felt that experience when I went there as well. I mean, it's just a, such a beautiful place, amazing place. And there's so many people, I don't know about that early, but so many people that actually hike up to the falls. And it's just everybody, when I go up there, people are just in awe. So I can just picture you up there just, you know, as a junior in high school thinking about that. And so early in the morning, probably seven o'clock right now or, or earlier, the sun's just kind of coming up and, and uh, you know, maybe even some steam's coming off the trees at that moment. So beautiful experience. Have you been to, to Yosemite since? I have. Yes. I, I knew that at that moment that there was no way that was going to be my last trip there. I've gone a couple of times since then and camped there and, and done those same hikes again. Well, oh, great. You know, my ex- first experience was back in 2009 growing up in California. So I had never been there. It's 38 when I went there. And uh, I experienced that with my parents the first time and just driving through the tunnel and driving into the valley was just absolutely amazing. And it's such Mm. a beautiful place. And I think that with your experience in Yosemite, people have had those experiences in their life. People get so overwhelmed with life that they don't really take time to think about those types of experiences and how they felt in that moment. And so that's why I love sharing these stories when people are, are older to really think about those experiences in their life and try and bring that feeling back into them. And it's funny that you actually mentioned Yosemite because I created this piece of art that I have actually above my desk right now that's a picture of Yosemite Valley that I took with the Merced River. And Mm -hmm. it just is very inspiring and relaxing, like you said in the beginning, where we look at pictures and they're relaxing as well. So I, I think that's one of the reasons why we have uh, so many pictures in our home of or photographs that we love or quotes that we love that have that image of those times in our life to bring us back to those experiences. So thank you so much for sharing that story. Yeah, absolutely. So I've come up with a term called the nature effect, and it's basically the impact that nature has on us, the effect that nature has on us in our lives, and whether it's a positive one or how the lack of nature has a negative effect in our lives. So how does the nature effect have an impact in your business and your life today? 
Oh, big time. I mean, that is, you know, getting outside and I'm a big runner too. So I really enjoy going on runs where, you know, we live right on the bay here in San Diego. So we have a beautiful boardwalk that wraps around to the ocean. And, you know, I love that release. Um, my favorite thing about being out on a run or on a walk or hiking or camping or mountain biking or whatever you're doing out in nature is that you don't feel that it's almost like a necessity to be, especially today, to be on some type of device, whether it be your phone, um, an iPad, your computer, uh, in front of the television, listening to the radio, anything. Um, you know, when I'm out in nature, I kind of don't feel that draw anymore because I have so many other amazing things in front of me, whether it just be the skyline or the ocean or, you know, the birds or whatever it is that's in front of me when I'm outdoors, you know, I don't feel that draw anymore. And that really, for me, provides a great balance in my life, I feel, especially as an online entrepreneur, you know, our business is built on us being connected and on devices. And I am so grateful for that. You know, everything that we've built is thanks to technology. So I'm certainly not talking down on technology but it's nice that I feel nature can give me that balance to where when I'm outdoors, I don't feel like I have to, you know, be on my computer or be on my phone. And that feels really great. Well, and you mentioned something that's important. And what Smore Country knows about me is that I used to work for 12 years. I used to work for a cell phone company. And so it was a really battle for me because I loved being outdoors and I want to teach people about the benefits of the, the outdoors, yet I was selling them the benefits of being online all the time. And so, you know, and I saw people and what technology has done to people and, and how it's connected us in a sense, but it's also disconnected us because we are, we're not aware of the people around us. We're not really talking to the people around us and we're not, we're always inside in what I like to call our electrical paradise. Mm -hmm. So being able to take that break um, from our electrical paradise. And I know you and John spend a lot of time uh, online because that's your business as well mm -hmm. as I do too, learning or teaching or whatever you're doing online. So it's so important that you have incorporated the outdoors into your life to create that type of balance or at least to just at least unplug for a while and get away and think. I think it's absolutely necessary and you need that vitamin D, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So leaving the nature effect and, and what it does for you and, and how it inspires you and helps you think, what's an idea that you've had that has come from your time in the outdoors? Oh my gosh. I feel like that's where I generate all of my ideas. Um, okay. So I, I guess a very recent example was I was literally just on a run yesterday and um, I was thinking about a, a recent post that I did for our audience that was about ways to prevent burnout. So I went to other entrepreneurs who, you know, have families who work nine to fives and who are trying to start their business on the side and I asked them for their advice because I feel like this is something a lot of, you know, people just starting up or even successful entrepreneurs who already have businesses struggle with preventing burnout. They are struggling to find that balance. And I was out on a run and I was really thinking about the post and I thought, you know, I, I just felt like there was more to be said about the topic. And so when I got back from my run, I literally, before I took a shower, before I did anything, I sat down and I wrote a 2000 word post as a follow up to that. Um, you know, and it was all thanks to me being away and disconnected from other things to allow my mind to just be open and think. And I feel like I come up with so many ideas for topics and, you know, being away from my computer and not being, you know, in my house thinking about everything that is around me that I'm looking at, whether it be my kitchen is dirty, I have laundry to do, my bed isn't made, you know, here's my computer and I have 50 unread emails. You know, when I'm outside, I don't have all those distractions. And so it allows me to really just kind of freely think about whatever comes to mind. And, you know, yesterday on that run, it happened to be that topic. And, it felt great to come back and just so freely write a 2,000-word post as a follow-up that I feel is going to be very valuable. 
And what I want everybody to take from from her story about how she was inspired outdoors to write this blog post and just get away. She got away from the distractions that would have kept her from that idea. So there may be things in your life that you're distracted by. The world is a noisy place. There's so much information. We've got so much information overload in our lives that we don't have time. And we, we if we're not getting outdoors and experience the nature effect, we're not allowing our minds to relax. Our minds are going constantly. And I think that part of part of coming up with any type of idea or really discovering more about yourself is breaking away and allowing allowing your mind to relax so you can really dive deep and connect with yourself and be inspired in those times that we're outdoors. So thank you so much for sharing that story with us, Kate. You are very welcome. So the last few questions I want to kind of dive into really teaching people or, or inspiring people or giving them some sort of ideas, how they can bring the outdoors more into their life so that they can understand the importance of it. Uh, obviously, they're understanding the importance from the show and from, from your stories of being outdoors. But you talked about when you get outside, you mostly go on a run. Mm -hmm. And you talked a little bit about hiking and camping and maybe bike riding. Uh, other than running, what's, what's the second most important thing that you do outdoors? I would say the second most important thing I do outdoors is, you know, just going for walks. And, you know, I really enjoy that, too. I know that's quite similar to running, but, you know, that's another thing that gets me outdoors a lot. And, you know, oftentimes when I'm walking or, you know, I mentioned riding my bike, too. We live in a place that's very conducive to riding your bike just about anywhere you want to go. And um, my my family lives close by. My parents live just about a mile up the street and my sister and her family live, you know, about a half a mile away. And so a lot of the times when I'm getting outside, you know, it's to go see my family, to go meet my niece and nephew at the park, to, you know, go hang out at my parents' house or to go do something with them. So I would say outside of running, it's probably, you know, the activities that, aren't necessarily the end result isn't necessarily going to be something outdoors, you know, it, but me actually getting to that event is bringing me outdoors. Well, and you live very close to the beach, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. How often do you actually go to the beach? <laughs> That's a funny question. I think about that a lot because, um, because I, I found a few years back that it was almost never. And I thought, how crazy is this? There are so many people that you know, come visit San Diego and they see our proximity to the ocean and they think we're crazy for not being there every second of every day. Um, of course, I would love to do that, but then we wouldn't really get a whole Anything lot done. Yes. <laughs> um, I would say I bring myself down to the beach at least once a week. And um, something that I really enjoy doing is I'll meet up with friends at um, a coffee shop that's right on the boardwalk and it's all outdoors. So you just kind of walk up to the window, you grab a cup of coffee and then they have a bunch of you know, seating area. So I really enjoy getting outside and going and doing that because then we can just, you know, relax there by the beach and have our coffee. Well, and the reason why I wanted to ask that question is because a lot of people, like I notice it living near Yosemite and Sequoia, is that when I, whenever I go up there, most of the people that are on the trails or that I'm passing by are speaking a different language. And so, like you say, people come to certain places to experience uh, the beauty of it. Like they go to San Diego and they go to the beach because the, the beaches in San Diego are just incredible. They come to Yosemite and Sequoia because it's part of, you know, they break away from their home in Europe or wherever they're from and come to the national parks because they're so amazing. But what I find is, is that people that live in San Diego or people that live in, in Fresno and Clovis areas where I live is they don't, they may not have been to the beach or they may not have been to Yosemite in a long time. And mm -hmm. they kind of take it for granted. Yeah, you know, I that, totally that agree. They just get caught up in their life. So yeah, I, just, I was just curious, you know, living close to the beach. I know you guys live right on the bay um, and get to see that all the time. Or most, you know, every morning, right? Mm -hmm. yes. No, but but I think that's so true. I think you bring up a great point, Brett, is that, you know, we take advantage of our surroundings. And it, that's pretty sad that that happens. I mean, if you could think of, and this is what I do oftentimes, you know, think of the people who would give anything to live right outside the gates of Yosemite or 
you know, live right next to a beautiful mountain or the desert or the beach or whatever it might be in your backyard. Um, you know, there are thousands of people out there who would absolutely give anything to be as close as you are to an, something amazing outdoors. And, you know, it's, it's sad that we take advantage of that. So I, I like that you point that out because I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So take advantage of the outdoors around you, bring it back into your life, you know, spend five minutes a day outside, get out there and, you know, spend what I like to call the weekly green hour, head to the mountains, head to the beach, just somewhere away from the city. So definitely thank you for for sharing your input on that. So when you don't spend time outdoors, I know you're surrounded a lot by the outdoors and you do a lot, but when you don't spend time outdoors, what negative effects do you feel in your life? I just feel kind of cut off, honestly, Um, I think would probably be the best way to describe it. You know, sometimes when John and I are working on, you know, a big launch or, or something that we're doing together in the business, um, you know, it's easy to get stuck inside and not go outside at all. And I, the best way for me to describe that is just I kind of feel cut off. I feel shut down a little bit. Um, I, it, it is my goal every single day to get outside for at least an hour, um, if not more, hopefully more, because I feel a lack of energy when I'm not able to, you know, get out of my house or, you know, out of the office, whatever it might be for anybody. I think it's really important to take that time to even if it's a walk or going to the grocery store, you know, it it could be an an everyday errand that you're running that brings you outside. And, you know, that's kind of how I like to look at it sometimes is, you know, if I don't feel like I have time to go outside, I should at least have time to go do something that's productive and that might bring me outside. And you answered the next question. So thank you for that. (laughs) It was how how do you make sure it's the most important thing that you do in your life? So Uh yeah. (laughs) Can you share one of your favorite places that you like to go just to kind of get away and think? There is a a park here in town that's called Kate Sessions Park, and it's just right up the hill. It's about a mile away from where we live, and it's a beautiful, beautiful park way up on the hill, Mount Soledad um, here in San Diego. And you have views. You have 360-degree views of San Diego, the bay, the beach, downtown. You can even see down to Mexico on a clear day. Um, you can see over into the mountains and the desert, and it's it's a very peaceful place. It's very green, lots of trees, a lot of open space. So there's not, you know, big buildings or or you know houses stacked on top of each other like most parts of San Diego. Um, so I really enjoy going up there if I kind of just want to get away and and be by myself. Well, and what I love about that story as well is that it's it's near where you're at. I mean, obviously you have the beach and you can go to the beach and look out in the ocean and stuff. But a lot of cities have places like Mount Soledad. You know, they have parks in their city, like maybe not as big as uh, I think it's uh, Golden Gate Park up in San Francisco. Mm, Isn't that right? mm -hmm, Or mm -hmm. um, Central Park in New York, you know, places like that. But there's places in your city where people have, where the city has set a designated area to create an environment for you to go to. And even if it's just as simple as going that, you don't have to head out to the mountains or, or go to some national park to experience the effects of, of nature in your life. You can go to your local city park that they've created as well. Yeah, I I think that, you know, I would really encourage people to, even if they feel like they're literally in the middle of a city, I think that's an awesome point. I remember John and I recently took a trip to Europe and we were in Paris and we went up to Montmartre, which is, you know, an amazing hill um, right outside of the city. And we got there and I thought like, wow, there's just so much going on everywhere. There's so many buildings, streets, cars, you know, traffic commercial, residential. And we turned this corner and literally right in the middle of the center of town was this little park. I mean, it's the smallest park I've probably ever been in before. But like we stepped inside of that park and it was like we were suddenly not in the city and we weren't in the hustle and bustle anymore. And I thought it was so cool that, you know, the city or the town or whoever had done this had blocked off that area There were trees there, flowers, um, you know, like bird baths and stuff. It was just such a beautiful area. And it was right in the middle of everything, but it was also still felt very secluded when you were actually inside of it. Yeah. And that's what these parks can do. And that's like uh, 
I know that my first experience up in Golden Gate Park was like that. You know, you, driving into San Francisco, it's so crazy. I mean, there's so much traffic, but then you get to this place and it's like they're, you're not even in the city, mm -hmm. you know, so I share that experience. So what's the best idea? People struggle with, a lot of times uh, with the time that they have because we're so busy and we've overcommitted our lives to so many different activities and, and made so many different commitments in our lives. What's the best advice you have for someone who wants to get outdoors or who's thinking about getting outdoors, but really struggles with the time that they have to spend that time outdoors? Well, Brett, another one of my favorite quotes that I also live by is John Maxwell's. And he said, the secret of your success lies in your daily routine. So the way that I make absolute positively sure that I get outside every day is that I commit to a daily run. That's part of my routine. It's not something that I skip. It's not something that I only do if I can find the time. It is a part of my day. And I make it so because I schedule it. And, you know, for anybody who's working a corporate job or who has a family, I totally get that life gets busy. And I think that working out and being outdoors, to your point, is something that people think that they should or might only do if they can find the time. But if you schedule it, if you make it a part of your daily routine, then you won't have to worry about it because it's you're going to do it no matter what. Just the same way you're going to, you know, eat at some point in the day no matter what, you know, make being outside, being active, being in nature, something like that in your day that you don't only do if you have time, but that you do every single day no matter what. Now, you had talked about, and I love that, you know, scheduling it, and I love that quote as well. And you you guys do have a lot of... I mean, you live in an environment where you can get out and making that daily run a priority. But thinking back to your your years when you were the account executive at, at an advertising and marketing firm, you were pretty busy. How many hours do you think you worked in a day? Oh, my gosh. So many. The agency world is crazy. Um, at least nine, if not 10, 11, 12 hours sometimes. Okay. So... Most of my most of small country works a lot of hours like that. How did can we relate it to your story back then? How did you make sure that it was important to you back then to be able to get outdoors? Absolutely, it, especially given that I was in Maine and they actually have winter time. Um, you know, it was a struggle sometimes, and I, I was lucky to be quite close to work, so I didn't have a huge commute in the morning. But, you know, I'm I'm 110% honest when I say that I would wake up at 5 a.m. and snowstorm or no snowstorm, I was putting on sometimes three or four layers of clothes and I was going on a run. And, you know, I was lucky to live in an area where that was possible. I was, you know, living where they had, you know, sidewalk sweepers and there was a space for me to run. But I, again, it was a part of my daily routine. I didn't get outside and go for a run or, you know, be active or be outdoors only if I had the time. I did it all the time, every day. And it didn't matter if, it, you know, sometimes I would do this when it was 20 degrees outside. I would come back really, really cold and really uncomfortable. But, you know, it was important to me that that was important to me. And it was important enough that I was willing to schedule it and do it no matter what. And you probably didn't stay up late watching TV. You went to right. bed early, you got up early and did what you needed to do to really help you be successful in that environment, to be successful yeah. in the in the marketing environment. Well, well thank you for for that because a lot of people when I when I went out and surveyed people, people struggled with either the weather you know, mm -hmm. their time outdoors because of the weather or because of the limited amount of time that they have. And so yeah. I'm trying to teach people that the weather and time is irrelevant to what you can do spending out. Kate would go out when it's 20 degrees outside, you know, and come back and layer up her clothes. So, yeah. Know, and no and even, you know, even if it's not, you have a family and you have kids to get ready for school, you can't get up at 5 a.m., then use your lunch break to get outside. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're at a corporate job then and you're not getting a lunch break, then that is against the law. So <laughs> I, yes. I know you're getting a lunch break. So you do at least have 30 minutes or maybe an hour, depending on what your workday is, to 
take time outside. And there's just honestly no excuse for it. And if you're going to be making an excuse for not getting outside, then, you know, that's, it's just not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, <we can't laughs> I don't really. even know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, because you, people, we do make excuses for certain things. You know, it took me a while to launch this podcast because I was making an excuse that it wasn't going to be good enough or it wasn't going to, I wasn't going to be able to get guests to come on the show. It's just something we all make excuses, but the excuses, and you just have to do it. Bottom line, you just have to do it. Well, Kate, thank you so much for being here today. Before we go, if you can share some final words, you've shared a lot of words of encouragement, but some final words of encouragement to S'more Country and how they can connect with you. Yeah, you know, Brett, you talking about um, Golden Gate Park and I'm thinking of other trips that I've been on where, you know, weather might be prohibiting me spending time outside. Um, You know, picking up hobbies, I think, is another great way to, you know, regardless of the weather that you're experiencing or or where you live in the world, um, picking up a hobby is a great way to get outside too. When I was living in Maine, and it was winter time and it was brutal to be outside. I learned how to become a really good skier and I would spend my weekend skiing. And that can be a family thing. So even if you have a family and, you know, you're busy with them, bring them with you. Um, you know, I think that that's something that I've learned through having experienced it in my own childhood that my parents made those activities family activities. So it wasn't about whether or not we had the time. It was something that we were doing together as a family. So You know, there are hobbies that will help you get outdoors where you can be having a lot of fun doing something, kayaking, skiing, running, biking, camping, um, you know, whatever it might be. And and your point to or my point about Golden Gate Park was that, you know, they have I don't know if you've been to it, but they have like a conservatory there and you go in and they have different environments within this building. Like one of them is a rainforest environment. And so I think that there's probably a lot of places out there that if we just took the time to research and find out where they are, that there are places where you can actually be inside, but still be experiencing the outdoors through these different types of conservatories or, um, you know, something that comes to mind that literally took my breath away when I saw it was um, Sagrada Familia, which is in Barcelona. And it's Gaudi's masterpiece. It's a church, but the entire inside is structured as nature. Everything about it is trees and, you know, life, wildlife, nature. So I think that there's a lot of opportunities for us to still be experiencing nature, even if we're not outdoors necessarily. So you know, anybody who's thinking that they just can't be outside for whatever reason, there might be an indoor place where you can still be outside. <laughs> yes. Well, and there's telling that story about that is, is I'm picturing in my mind and I, I don't know what it's called, but I think it's called an arbor, arbitorium that they do have in San Diego um, near the zoo, I think. Correct. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. there's something like that where you can experience like rainforest environments and just different desert environments like that. So some of your big, bigger cities do have places like mm-hmm. that. And Kate, how can S'more Country connect with you? You can connect with me at eofire.com. That's where me and my partner, John, house all of our content and our podcast and our website and, and all that good stuff. So we would love for you to come over and check it out. And um, thank you again, Brett, so much for having me on today. Well, thank you. And I hope that you have a great afternoon. You too. Well, that's it for today's episode of S'more Outdoor. And I'm so excited to be here with you again today to share the stories and outdoor experiences from people like Kate. So a few things before I go. If you head on over to s'moreoutdoor.com, you can see a recap of, of Kate's show on her show notes page, along with ways that you can connect with her. Just go ahead and type Kate in the search bar. And if you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, we would love it if you'd leave a comment on her page where Kate and I will respond. To stay updated with new episodes, I would also appreciate if you'd subscribe to the show and leave a rating and review. This helps to get the show noticed so that others like you and I can learn about how the nature effect can have an impact in their lives and they can become inspired by these stories as well. 
Also, if you know anyone who's struggling with work, maybe someone who is just a little stressed out and things aren't going well for them, or you have family and friends that don't listen to podcasts but are on their computers and phones all the time, I would be honored if you'd share this message with them, tell them about S'more Outdoor, and that way they can listen to the show and not miss out on this message that we share. So I hope that Kate's story has inspired you to reconnect with nature and start living with childlike wonder again. Thank you for tuning in to the show that's changing lives around the world. Until next time, I challenge you to do something this week to get S'more Outdoor. Outdoor.